series, of course, not new anymore. T.J. Hooker has been an enormous hit. He's got a hit video out called A Study of Halley's Comet. He's involved with a variety of charities, and he's going to make Star Trek IV beginning this spring. It's nice to see you again, Bill. How did nice you... Too. And by the way, if you want to talk to William Shatner, you can call us at 202-898-7600. Mr. Shatner is with us in our studios in Los Angeles. How did you first get that part? How were you, Captain Kirk? How did that happen? Uh, well, uh, to go back into the mists of antiquity, uh, I believe I was in New York City doing something or other, and uh, a pilot had been made of Star Trek, uh, and another actor in, in the part, Jeffrey Hunter, and uh, it didn't sell. And uh, the NBC liked what they saw uh, as a concept, but didn't like the execution and asked uh, Gene Roddenberry to recast it. And Gene Roddenberry called me in New York and asked me to come and see that pilot, which I did. We analyzed what we thought was wrong with it, tried to correct it, and the following pilot um, sold. Did you like it right away? I saw what space really is to all of us. I saw the mysteriousness, I saw the intrigue, I saw the possibilities, as did a lot of other people, and uh, I fell in love with the concept, yeah. True or false, that Star Trek was not a major hit? Well, that's very true. We were uh, frequently, in the three years that we were in production, in a bad time slot, which is everything in a, uh, in a series show, time slot is the be-all and end-all. Uh, you don't have to be good, you just have to be in the right place at the right time and um we ended up on a, our third year i think friday at 10 o'clock at night which is a graveyard so uh we were never uh, well put before the public and subsequently when we were syndicated the earlier hour and uh, apparently the better time slot made us more popular than we'd ever been when we were network not that uh, that's a strange story in television isn't it to be more yeah, apparently popular? Apparently quite unique, yeah. All right. Is it all, as the Trekkies now grown, is it beyond the cult? Well, I, I think so. Uh, we certainly hope so in terms of the box office appeal of the movies that we keep making. We're making Star Trek IV. Uh, this month we start filming for a uh, Christmas release of this year, and we certainly hope that if cult means a small group of intense people, <laughs> We hope it's a large group of intense people. How, uh, Bill, did you view Kirk? Was he all straight arrow? How did you give it uh, dimension? My thought of the character from the very beginning was that of a Greek hero. And I tried to play him as I had been uh, trained in, in, in the theater uh, with the look of eagles, so to speak. And... Um, and I would, I tried to behave like I personally would like to have behaved in a crisis situation. He, uh, did you like him? Very much. He's, he's a noble human being. Why do we, would you agree that Star Trek, that it got us really fascinated with space? Oh, I, I think that it was in there along with many other uh, uh, influences. Uh, Science fiction writing had been uh, 50 years, I guess, in the, in the making up until that point. And there are many instances of people uh, having written about, let alone the multitudes who did, look to the stars and wonder and ponder and speculate. Yeah, but this was doing it in the national dimension. While it wasn't a major hit, it was more of a hit than any other science fiction. That's, that's right. And, and, and as it became a major hit, it truly influenced a lot of our thinking. And I do know that uh, NASA at that time, struggling for funds from Congress, viewed us as their PR, and uh, apparently we were somewhat influential in getting funds for them at, at, at moments when it seemed that they would cancel programs. This is a quote attributed to you in USA Today concerning the tragedy. You said, according to USA Today, the courage of these people who go into space is thrilling to us because we always know, without thinking about it, the dangers they are chancing. But the courage is real because the dangers are real. Because they've all gone so well, we try to forget they're risking their lives. 
Now we can't. Correct quote? Yes, and I, you started the program off by saying I had strong feelings. I, I wouldn't like your audience to get the impression that I was uh, trying to latch on to, uh, to this tragedy. I, I was asked a question, and I made an answer, and then you're quoting it correctly, but uh, the tragedy is enormous. The thing that I was thinking was that in every voyage of exploration, the, there is danger and death because it is exploration. Otherwise... It wouldn't be a, 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 a discovery. And we, uh, uniquely, because of this media, uh, forget that that exploding, that controlled explosion that, they, uh, that the astronauts ride to get to the skies is, in fact, a bomb. And there is great danger. And because of the way we can view it time after time, uh, by the 15th run, why, it's old hat. But it really isn't, and there's the potential for death and destruction all the time. We tend to forget that because we become inured to it as a result of the screen. Last night, Frank Borman said that he was opposed, and he said this before the accident, to the taking of a school teacher, a civilian, so to speak, in this stage of development. Do you agree? Well, I can understand that viewpoint. Uh, I think, though, that if the dangers are made apparent and an individual is invited I being a, an individual for example would relish the chance to take uh, the gamble and go aboard at this stage of development because by the time it's safe as a car or an airplane will be long gone you would go then oh very much so you would go if they said it's safe now and we'll invite you next year? I would go now if they said, you saw what happened and we're going again, the potential is there, would you still come? And I, I would say yes, and I'm willing to bet that those seven people would have said yes, too. What fact, do you, they did say yes. Yeah. What effect do you think, Bill, this will have on the program? I don't think any. Uh, really? I, no, I think that if it has any effect, it'll be salutary. I think that... The people who forged this program uh, from the very beginning uh, knew that it's a, they're test pilots. They were test pilots. They are test pilots. And we don't see those test pilots uh, going down in flames uh, as the new, uh, as the new uh, vehicles uh, were being tested because they were privately done. We saw one go down in flames because it was a public spectacle. Uh, the dangerous aspect is, was always there, and the men who flew it, and the men who directed it and worked on it knew that. Uh, and uh, th th this just happens to, to be in the public domain now, but it was privately held concept, I'm sure, that it was dangerous. A couple of other things. We'll break and then take some phone calls. Tell me about this uh, video. The video is uh, a marvelous piece of tape about uh, Halley's Comet, how it got... Uh, here, where it's going, where it came from, how to see it, the mystery of it, the awe of it. It's, uh, it's gotten some awards and it's, uh, it's doing very well uh, as it sells and uh, I think it's well worth uh, viewing. What is the, in simple terms, the fascination of that comet? Well, the fascination is it's an original piece of primordial material that uh, is flying around the universe and sweeps by the earth and uh, with enough light for us to see it and the fascination of where it's been and how long it's been there is why we're fly trying to fly into space and uh, about the horses what got you interested in horses i mean you're one of the major breeders i guess so what what is it called the saddle horse the american saddlebred well, the American Saddlebred is a thing of beauty. Uh, it's a work of art, this horse. It was bred for riding, for the pleasure of riding. And as time went on, uh, and as men will, they began to compete as to who had the more pleasurable, the more beautiful, the more trainable, the more uh, unique horse. And that became a competition. And so there are American Saddlebreds that are show horses, and they show like ballet dancers. and. I am uh, proud and, uh, and humbled by the fact that I'm able to show them. 
and at the same time, they are uh, a wonderful horse as a, as a pleasure as a pleasure horse to have. They don't race them, though, do they? No, we show them in a show whereby you see the motion, the line, the figure. It's it's a ballet dance, in fact. Huh. And there's a there's a show here <coughs> in Los Angeles called the Cares Horse Show between uh, Wednesday of this coming week, the fifth, and Sunday the ninth. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at the uh, Los Angeles uh, Equestrian Center. And uh, there's a performance every night. And I'll be there showing my horses. And in the uh, Los Angeles area, I urge everybody to go to the uh, Cares Horse Show, the funds of which will go to the USC uh, daycare centers and uh, help uh, support those uh, very necessary things. Our guest is William Shatner. He's involved in many things. We'll go to your phone calls for the star of T.J. Hooker following these words. At the bottom of the hour, two of America's foremost media critics who disagree over the electronic media's coverage of the space tragedy, Howard Rosenberg of the Los Angeles Times, Edwin Diamond of New York Magazine. Our guest is William Shatner, the star of Star Trek and T.J. Hooker, we're ready to go to your phone calls for Bill Shatner. We start with Rochester, New York. Hello. Uh, good evening, Larry. Uh, Bill, I'd first like to, I'm sure you feel the same, extend uh, condolences to the crew and the families of uh, STS-51L. Bill, i got a question for you. You know, television, don't you think it could be used as a much more powerful medium to uh, bring people closer to science, for example, the industrialization of space? than uh, be playing all this trivia as one, uh, one, one executive producer for a uh, miniseries said to me, called science and aerospace gibberish. But I really believe that television can do a hell of a lot more to educate people. I know I'm in the aerospace industry myself, and I wonder about these things. You think so, William? You think we've done enough? No, we, we haven't done enough. We've done what the media has done, what the public has asked. Uh, uh, they, they, they are in the business, the, the studios and the networks are in the studios, uh, in the business of selling, uh, they're not in the business of educating. It's up to us, the citizens, to request that education, and if we don't, they won't. Simply put, and put well, Columbus, Ohio, for William Shatner, hello. Yes, Mr. Shatner, I had a question for you concerning, um, not as much Star Trek or anything like that, what would be what would you consider your favorite horse as far as uh sturdiness and just a well-built horse i'm partial to clydesdale i was wondering what maybe you consider well a clydesdale certainly is a solid well-built <laughs> horse but i'm i'm a fanatic for the american saddle brand i just uh, am enamored i'm passionately in love with the horse and uh, to me as uh, i think the doberman is the greatest breed uh, I'm totally prejudiced, uh, but prejudiced with good reason. I have uh, ethnic facts at my command. I think the saddlebred is the greatest horse around. In uh, personality, is it uh, similar to any way the thoroughbred, or is it much more calm? Well, it's both calmer and more excitable, if you will. The thoroughbred is geared to run. He's crazy to run, and frequently a a, uh, a running thoroughbred is just barely broken, and uh, they rely on his instincts to, to surpass the, the horse beside him. But a, a show horse, a saddlebred, is a contained bomb, if you will. He is excited and has been trained for years, and that excitation and that training meet in the show ring with the rider on top of him, and uh, the rider shows uh, the horse, uh, the horse's ability is there. The rider partners him, if you will, as in a ballet dance. And it, uh, it there's, so there's more excitation and, and more training. With William Shatner, we go to New York City on Larry King Live. Hello. How are you, Larry? How are you, Bill? Fine. Um, I went to a Star Trek convention in New York last night when Leonard Nimoy was there. And we were told that we could have creative ideas into Star Trek IV. And when we asked him about it, he said, Shooting production was stopped. Now, why was this? Uh, what's your you question? Have any idea? Well, he, uh, why he, what? He said that uh, Leonard Nimoy told him at a Star Trek convention that shooting on Star Trek IV had stopped. Yeah, due to problems. I think I, I think you must have misunderstood. 
Uh, there may he may have been talking about a delay, but we haven't started to shoot yet. We start shooting February the 18th, and we'll continue till the end of May. Ah, then you can give us some idea of the storyline. I could give you some idea of the storyline. You could. Oh, of course I could. I've read the script two or three times, but I ain't going to. <laughs> we go to Eugene, Oregon. Hello. Hello. I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Shatner how he felt about his uh, roles that he played in, like, the Twilight Zone, Thriller, Outer Limits. I've seen all of them. I've seen all the Star Trek stuff. I used to be a, a one of those sneak up and watch it when the parents back were turned type kids. <laughs> Well, if you're asking me how I enjoyed playing them, very much so. Did you like doing the Twilight Zone? That was, uh, there was uh, a couple of Twilight Zones that I did that somehow seemed to have touched a universal nerve. Yeah. Uh, they were made so many years ago, and yet they seem to have lived on, and I don't really know why or what that universal is, but apparently uh, a couple of them I, that I did uh, are among the most popular. I, they were decent, good enough, but I don't understand why they're so popular. Well, with Rod Serling, you did have a good script, didn't you? We had good scripts, yes. He was a wonderful writer, a uh, wonderful producer, and uh, on the whole, we had good stories, yes. Decatur, Illinois, for William Shatner. Hello. Yes, good evening, Larry. Bill, oh. first, I want to thank you very much, Bill, for the uh, portrayal of Kirk and what it's done to help us get into space. Uh, in the portrayal of Kirk, you know, many times Kirk had to make decisions and see crew members die, um, and I'm sure that those scenes were discussed and uh, gone over very thoroughly between you and Broadbury and everyone else on the uh, on the show. Now we've had people die without the careful choreography. With the show uh, and the portrayal that went on, how would you compare the media coverage of this death, of these deaths, with the way perhaps it would have been done on Star Trek? Did the media do it in a tasteful way, or could it have been done better? All right, that's the subject at the bottom of the hour, and I'll certainly be interested in your opinion, Bill. Well, you know, I think the expectation of the media, it has a capital M and a sounds uh, mystical and marvelous and uh, meticulous uh, but it's neither of those things uh, and, and something uh, as dramatic as an event like that these people are shooting from the hip uh, literally their camera ranging around at anything that they can find uh, they're in competition with each other and CNN uh, who can get the best most interesting story and very little taste is involved as a, uh, because they're, they're working from instinct. They're working from moment to moment so that they grab what is there while it's there. And it's unfair to compare uh, a uh, artistic show of whatever value that has even five minutes, let alone five days or five weeks, to concentrate, to, to um, coordinate and, and to um, edit uh, themselves, whereas in this case the media had no chance to. Tidewater, Virginia, with William Shatner. Hello. Hello, Bill, Larry. How are you? Hi. I need to get some information. I'd like to know if uh, you're going to rebuild the Enterprise or whether you're going to take the Excelsior. And second of all, are you going to kill Scotty off this time? Okay, now that's a fair question, Bill. Are you going <laughs> to rebuild the first one or take the Excelsior? Well, let me tell you this. I think that you'll all be very happy with the way Star Trek IV works out the problems. Now, that is a wonderfully direct answer. <laughs> Not even a hint, Bill? Come on, a hint. For all you, the... I, I'll bet you you could extend what I've just said and get a hint. Yeah, I guess you could. If it's going to make all of us happy who like the show. By the way, major differences in shooting it as a feature as opposed to when you shot it as a television show. Well, of course, the rapidity, the speed of which you have to do a series, you're blindly running, literally running, from location to set to camera, learning lines. There's a, a hysterical air about shooting a series that uh, permeates everything, the writing, production, editing, and finally, the viewing, I guess. On a large motion picture, 
it's the difference between doing ten pages a day uh, and two pages a day. Uh, there's more time, uh, calmer moments. Uh, there are things to be uh, uh, thought about as to uh, which way it should go. You don't have that much time in, in, uh, in um, a series. At the same time, it's a little duller. That's right, yeah, because there are long moments of boredom, right? That's correct. Yeah. Punctuated, punctuated by moments <laughs> of great terror. <laughs> Los Angeles for Bill Shatner. Hello. Hello. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Mr. Shatner for all the joy he's given us in his various portrayals. And um, my question is, I was wondering whether the relative safety, uh, which is shown on, in a film like Star Trek in space flight, uh, whether that might have softened the United States, uh, not just Star Trek, but other films like Star Trek, for the blow that uh, the explosion of Challenger gave us, uh, whether space flight might be being shown as too casual of a thing um, in these futuristic films. Yeah, do you well, think we kind of expect it, William? You know, uh, in a terror movie, in a horror movie, when it gets too close to you, you can sit back and say, oh, wait a minute, it's a movie, it's a dream, it's, it's not real. And you see something as horrible and as terrible as what we saw on television, you can't sit back. When you see the faces of the loved ones screaming in horror, you can't pull back and say, well, it's only a movie. You're living with them. It's two entirely different things. It's the difference between real life and fiction. New York City with William Shatner. Hello. Hello, Mr. Shatner. First, let me say you give me a great deal of pleasure. I admire you tremendously. Two questions. First, uh, is it true you're one of the bosses of the alleged Canadian conspiracy <laughs> that uh, has uh, Hollywood so terrorized? And secondly, uh, I know very little about your background, your boyhood. Could you tell me something about it? Okay. Does that come out in the conspiracy program or will you reveal it now? I can reveal the conspiracy now. There is a, um, a network of Canadians living in in Hollywood, none of whom see each other. Every so often, <laughs> we pass by and sing, Oh, Canada, and that's the limit <laughs> of the conspiracy. We, um, we're just, uh, well, actually, we were friendly in Canada. There's a group of people who were at Stratford, uh, Ontario, together. I was one of them. My background, I'm from Montreal. I studied uh, theater in Montreal. I was in professional theater in Canada for five years, including three years at the Stratford, uh, Ontario, company and uh, somewhere in that fifth year uh, after I graduated from McGill University I came down here uh, with the, as a matter of fact with the Shakespeare group to New York to play uh, uh, in the Winter Gardens there and uh, I got lucky and stayed. Do you go to watch the Los Angeles Kings play hockey? You know I never was much interested in, in hockey. Uh, really? That, that may be shocking as a Canadian but uh, I was more interested in skiing which I got quite adept at. But I never played hockey, and I did a lot of sports in Canada. Is McGill uh, Canada's finest school? It's, uh, arguably the finest. Uh, I think the University of Toronto will, will give you an argument, and there was uh, some wonderful other universities in Vancouver and the major cities. But McGill, certainly at the time I was there, and I believe still is, uh, was the best medical school, one of the best medical schools in the world. William, thanks very much. Look forward to Star Trek IV. Thank you. William Shatner. He is a part of Americana, is he not? He is, of course, T.J. Hooker every Saturday night. We're going to pause, and when we come back, we're going to meet Howard Rosenberg, the Pulitzer Prize-winning...